Ladies and gentlemen, people of the internet, I have gone and seen the disappointments for Omen. As kind of expected, I was disappointed. Now, The Disappointments Room is the story of a young family, having just lost a child, who have moved into a mansion in the country that is old and run down, and they're going to fix the place up. Which is a cliché beginning to a horror movie, but you know, it's not whether it's a cliché or not, it's whether it's well done. This movie is okay done. It's not well done, it's not underdone, it's just sort of okay done. And here's the biggest problem I had with this film, is that there is what's referred to as a poor internal logic. I'm going to grant that you're dealing with possibly spirits slash possibly hallucinations in this film. So is there, there is a kind of bending of reality. There is a reality torn, so sometimes you don't really know what's going on. But in the end, both the bent reality and the actual reality have to have things that mesh together, and it all has to make sense. So there is a scene where the husband character is talking to one of the, the yokels in the town, and it's revealed that he's a stay-at-home husband, and he doesn't have a job. He pretty much plays Xbox, leers after his wife, and you know, watches their kid. And, okay, you know, I didn't get that. And then there's another scene where she talks about how where the wife talks about how she's taken a leave of absence from the company that she started, and that the, the husband has a job. And there's even a scene where he's going out on a business trip. So, which is the reality? Both of these scenes happen in reality, but which one is it? There's another, there's another sequence where the son disappears entirely. He should be there. He needs to be there somewhere. Some video or some clip or some piece of this movie should account for him. He's merely not there. So this is the problem with the disappointments room, is that it suffers from an, a poor internal logic. Now, did I think the performances were bad? No, I didn't. I thought they were pretty good. It's just that when you have a movie where the wife is talking about how great a cook the husband is, but I haven't seen him pick up a spatula for the whole movie, and I've been seeing the wife do all the cooking, I have to start asking myself questions. And those questions are not truly answered. I mean, I watched this film, and I kept expecting her to wake up in a mental institution because her reality was that shattered. She didn't know where she was. And that did not happen. That is not the ending of this film. So I have to say that the disappointments room, yes, it is a disappointment. Now, I also have to understand something about horror movie fans. And horror movie fans basically don't care. Many of them look at a horror movie and say, yes, this is a horror movie. I know that can't happen. It's dumb. I came here to see a horror movie. So here's what I think you should do. Go out there and rent High Tension. It's a French film. If you watch High Tension and you think that's a good film and the plot holes don't bother you, you're going to watch The Disappointments Room and you're going to say, yeah, this didn't bother me. That's just what this is. It's a movie with a lot of plot holes, kind of well done, but not not absolutely terrible. I didn't hate this film. I'm really on the fence with it. That's kind of the thing. I mean, if I had to say that this this movie were a type of food, it would be a side of slightly stale french fries. Not great french fries, kind of soggy, but you know, hey, when you're hungry, these are great french fries. You really want to see a horror movie? This is a great film for you. If you don't want to see a horror movie, don't go see this because you're not going to be scared. You're not going to be interested. You're going to be looking at that going, but but wait, wait, no, didn't they say, did, did, didn't, that's my take on the movie. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. I'm Richard Neal.